So looking back at this recording, it is a mess. So I just want to explain what I'm doing here. I'm going to take a model and do what's called a convex decomposition. I want to go over the theory of how and why, how to scan an object. And we're going to do this for physics, for fragmentation. Let the mess ensue. So part one is Voronoi texture. I'm going to tell you how this is actually made and how this is the crux of what we're about to do. So I want you to imagine that there are two points in this kind of like rectangle over here. So let's make the line that kind of divides them. Points that belong to the green or this one, this one, this one, this one, kind of the boundary. But once we get over here, red is now the uh, nearest neighbor. But let's get crazier. Add a third point. So now we're comparing, is a point closest to one, two, or three? Now our uh, plane, our grid is partitioned into thirds, where a point over here is closest to this, a point over here is closest to this. This tri point, we'll call it, is equidistant to all of these. So this is our red cell, green cell, and cell. I'm kidding. This is our uh, blue cell. So these are actually what Voronoi's cells are. They're kind of this partition that happens when you say, oh, what sections are closest to which points? But this is going to have the property that every single cell is just going to be convex. That turns out to be important when you're doing a physics simulation and stuff like that. There is no like section that kind of bends inwards at all. This is what we're going for. So now in part two, we're going to make this three dimensional. This is everything we need before we fragment a real mesh. So first instinct is you want to put points on faces and eh, we want the points to actually exist inside uh, the three dimensional surface. Luckily for us, this is easy to do mesh to volume. Now we have a control to distribute points inside of a volume. And if any of these points happen to be like too close to each other, we can always like merge by uh, distance. So let's do something like that. And now we know for sure that our points are at least 0.34 apart. And then the question is, how do I take a mesh and then divide it, right? Divide it by these uh, points. Well, it turns out we don't do that. We just approximate it. The more detail we add, the more this approximates the mesh. And on a per cell or voxel or cube level, it's easy to see which cell does each part belong to. We can divide the space into points where we say, find which one is closest. This time I'm going to use grid. And you can see grid makes a grid of points. And the beauty of this is I can have a, a uniform spacing. So I'm going to just put in a single float. And the denser, the smaller you make this, the more dense it is uh, going to be. Could it be as easy as sample nearest? It turns out, yes. So I want to sample the nearest random point. This index tells us which point is it closest to. 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to try to visualize. Okay. You can see here that each point belongs to a uh, certain fragment. But the main idea is we can change our number of like source points and we can change the seed. How do we turn this into actual geometry? Well, ba -ba 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 -ba, split to instances. For each certain part of it, make it its own individual instance. So here I have 4,000 points. I'm going to split to instance by this index. And now you can see we have 41 instances. The group ID says which uh, group does each one belong to? Well, whatever point it's uh, closest to. The beauty of this is now we can take this and we can run a convex hull. That's it. We fragmented the mesh. What is this doing? It's basically taking a source point cloud and saying, what is the smallest convex? convex mesh or hull that I can make that kind of encompasses it. When we split to instances, it's going to do the convex hull individually per cell, but it's low resolution, so I can divide by two, and now we get something of much higher quality. This already runs pretty quick, and there are tricks to make this like look better without like doing all this uh, geo. Uh, one thing is you can make your uh, volumetric uh, more accurate, but I mean, look at how fast this is uh, to generate, right? Near instant, if you don't believe these are really separate, we can take each element or each uh, instance, and we can scale like that. This is kind of like the, what I call the convex decomposition or the uh, Voronoi decomposition of a mesh. And by the way, to turn this into like physics geo, you got to make sure at the very end you realize this. So they're not instances anymore. Do one of these separate by loose parts. Let's uh, make sure these are centered. Each one is its own component. You can totally take a fragment and then run the uh, same idea on it, by the way. You need more points to make this up. And now we've taken a uh, piece of it and subdivided it further. So now in part three, we need an actual mesh. I'm going to use the Moose Scanner sponsored to scan a interesting object and we'll convex decompositionify it. So now that I have everything set up, the question is, what am I going to convex decomposition of five. Well, the answer is right here. Here's all the answers you need right here. So the software I'm using with this thing is called a JM Studio. You can download that for free. And I've connected up my scanner so that you can see Ah! You take this plate, you throw it on here. This is a calibration plate. By the way, uh, on the side here, you can see the distance is relative to how far away things are. I'm going to put it on its side and do two kind of like half scans maybe. Take it off, do an initialization. And now uh, we put our object on the table. You hit scan and I think it only does a, a single uh, revolution. So we're going to get one piece of uh, data. Because I want more, I'm going to hit append. And this time, instead of right side up, I'm going to put it ass side up. Just so it kind of captures the whole thing. Click scan. I do have a lot of scanners. I'm a here. I'm a scanner 
own air. But I've never done the uh, table scan process. Okay, so here we have our two scans, actually only one. So here's the other. Of course, they're not aligned to each other. They couldn't be. Uh, so we do the aligning process, which normally does not work unless you do manual. But let's see. We're going to set it to auto. We're going to run alignment. No dice. No dice. That's fine. We're going to set this to manual mode. Really, all you need to know is that if you have three places in common, then you can match them. Well, kind of an obvious one is you can kind of do kind of the corner. So I'm going to click here, or I'm going to right click apparently, and then I have to find the corresponding spot, which requires some like 3D spatial mental math. You go to green, now you do a second point, and you can actually calibrate even more than, um, you know, than uh, three points if you want. Uh, but this does now seem to be matching, which is surprising because I did not do a great job at this. You can look at settings. I will not. Maybe I'll add texture mapping. Click process, refinement, nope, generic, and moderate. Okay, let's click apply. Look at that. The geometry is what I kind of care about the most for the convex decomposition. We'll call that good enough. You can export it in these file formats. OBJ is perfectly fine. Click save. This is the finale. I think you know what we're doing here. And here we go. It comes very big. So I'm going to scale it by 100. Going to reorient manually, center it, and here we go. Our goal with this is to do a convex decomposition. By the way, uh, here you can see the uh, material. Convex hull. Boom. Convex decomposition. Amazing. We can increase the resolution, of course. Let's do something like this. Now, because we want to do kind of a uh, intersection, we need geometry to uh, work with. So for this convex hull, I'm just going to realize instances. So this is actually geometry data now. And what we hope is that this will not crash. So I take the mesh boolean. I take the uh, intersection of this and the original mesh. Let that think. These convex hulls are a bit too close to each other. So if I scale elements now, right? So I make them kind of sparser in some sense. I take this here. I view it. Okay, there we go. So now you can see we get detail. And after you did the uh, kind of intersection, we can actually reverse the process of the uh, scale elements. So instead of 0.95, we do one divided by 0.95 or whatever. And this will kind of reconnect the mesh in some sense. So this is a pretty fast fragmentation, again, with the advantage of kind of changing the seed and not necessarily uh, committing to any uh, single thing. And if you like this, you can actually apply the modifier and run an actual uh, physics simulation. So let's do that. I'm going to separate by loose parts, where each of these I'm going to recenter and then add rigid bodies. So you can see the mesh isn't exploding because there's no overlap, right? The way it was founded in some sense has no uh, overlap. And boom, a fragmentation of our mesh. Let's say I want this whole thing to be part of a, a physics simulation as one mesh. When we do the convex hull, it isn't 100% accurate because it's not using actual mesh data. But the moment that we use actual mesh data, it's going to slow down and eh. <laughs> It's going to be a bit glitchy. I'm just going to take these convex hulls as the output, and you can probably see where I'm going with this. I'm going to use this as a, like a compound parent. So instead of a convex hull, you get a bunch of them to be like even more accurate. Make sure you realize it. Going to do the same kind of thing where I separate by loose parts. Each one gets the correct origin. And uh, all of these segments are going to be children of the original mesh. Make sure mesh is the parent. Control P. Instead of mesh, we can do something called compound parent. And now we get something that runs incredibly fast, incredibly fast but actually has more accuracy as a proxy. And honestly, that's all I want to say about this. So uh, thank you, Moose Scanner, for sponsoring and actually being useful uh, to this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something about Voronoi. Goodbye, I'm out of here.